Welcome to the NAHA webinar brought to you by the National Association for Holistic Aromatherapy. To learn more about NAHA, please visit www.naha.org. Tonight's presentation topic is What About Tomorrow? This educational webinar is being presented by Ragda Maksud. The founder of Eber's Consultancy, Ragda is an expert with more than 20 years professional experience in the essential oils, flavors, fragrance, and food processing industries. She is also a certified clinical aromatherapist and has launched a brand of aromatherapy essential oil product line in the United States. And she's also an active member of the following associations, Women for Flavors and Fragrance of North America, International Federation for Essential Oils and Aromatic Chemicals, and the National Association for Holistic Aromatherapy. To learn more about Ragda, please visit her website at www.ebersconsulting.com. And I'd like to just take a moment and welcome Ragda for being here this evening and talking on this very important topic that all us aromatherapists are happy to hear about, and that is the importance of sustainability. Thank you, Kelly. Good evening, everyone. And it's my great pleasure to be presenting the webinar tonight. Thanks a lot for your attendance. Tonight, we're going to be talking about sustainability. And as Rolf Waldo Emerson said, the earth laughs in flowers and nature always wears the colors of the spirit. Sustainability is a very important topic to everyone and specifically for me as I have been working uh, in the flavors and fragrance and essential oils industry since more than 20 years. And my work was uh, heavily involved in supply chain and sustain sustainability in sourcing and in business development. So it was one of the most important topics throughout the years. And I'm happy uh, that I'll be talking about it tonight um, with all of you. Um, so what about tomorrow? We will be talking about some objectives tonight. Um, what is sustainability? What are the sustainable development goals of the United Nations and how companies are supporting them? What are the three Ps, people, planet, and profit? the ecological footprint and ecological overshoot, consumer behavior and its impact on sustainable supply, and how we can help as communities and individuals helping sustainability. So what is sustainability? Sustainability is the 21st century's reality. It affects all aspects of our lives. The earliest sustainability term appears was in the year 1972 in a British book called A Blueprint for Survival. This book was signed by over than 30 of the leading scientists in that day. They were calling for what was referred as at that time the breakdown of society and how the life support system of this planet can be maintained. At that time in 1972, the world population was 3,861 million versus today population in 2018, which is 7,632 million. So the global population was half what it is now when they started to talk about sustainability. In 1987, the United Nations World Commission on Environment and Development released what was known as the Broadland Report, which basically summarized sustainability as Sustainable development is the development that meets the needs of the present 
without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. This means maintaining the world we live in and act responsibly so that the resources around us will be there to support the coming generations and to create life without damaging the environment around us, a balance between those two things that we need to, to have. So just a very quick example about this is one tree makes approximately 3,000 pieces of paper. And if you use 10 pieces of paper a day, that is more than one tree pulled down every year. That's, that's a lot of trees if, if we can do the math. So talking about sustainability, there are three pillars that is, um, sustainability is consisting of them, the, which are naming the three dimensions, three pillars, which are the social, economic, and environmental pillars. And if any one of these pillars is weak, then the system as a whole will be unsustainable. Seeing the overall system this way makes it very clear that environmental sustainability is the highest priority because the lower the carrying capacity of the environment, the lower the common good of the social system will be delivered. So there are so many organizations worldwide working under the United Nations and with the United Nations in order to um, work on the sustainability programs. Um, some of them are working on an environment like the EPAs and the um, United Nations environmental programs. Uh, others are working on the economic aspect like the World Trade Organization and the Organization for Economic Cooperation. And together with the NGOs, they are all trying to strengthen all the three pillars together. In September 2015, the General Assembly uh, of the United Nations adopted what is known as Sustainable Development Goals. And they are heading to the 2030 Agenda for this, including 17 Sustainable Development Goals, as you can see on the screen, building on one principle which is leaving no one behind. This is an agenda that is emphasizing a holistic approach to achieve sustainable development for everyone. Nearly 170 countries um, are working together to make this goal a reality. And uh, some of the statistics, Finland, is on the top of the most sustainable countries, while on the other end, Pakistan is on the top list of the most polluted countries. Venezuela is on the top list of the most protected countries in terms of sustainability. So, there is another terminology that is related to sustainability, which is called the three P's, the triple bottom, which is people, planet, and profit. And the term was first coined in 1994 by a founder of a British consultancy called Sustainability. And his argument was that the companies should be preparing the three different bottom lines. People, all individuals are treated fairly. The planet, the Earth's natural resources are not adversely impacted. And profit, economic success are not limited or unattainable by the pursuit of the two other values. So, 
So if we are looking at environmental dimensions, it will be the atmosphere that we're living in, the fresh waters and oceans, the land use, the management of the human consumption, the energy, water, the food, and the waste. The economical dimensions will be the economical growth, environmental degradation, and the economical systems as well. The social dimensions will be peace, justice, poverty, and labor rights. And all of this has been addressed as we saw before in the United Nations Developmental Goals. So companies are also um, part of this goal. So worldwide multinationals and global companies are working towards sustainable development. And they are actually um, working towards fighting inequality, um, towards tackling climate changes and also to work on eliminating extreme poverty. There are a lot of companies worldwide that is really working hard towards these goals, and they have so many approaches, and um, some of them are the sustainable manufacturing that they are taking, which, um, they need to increase operational efficiencies by reducing the waste, um, protect and strengthen the brand and reputation and build public trust in these brands, um, build long-term business relationships and success. They are really following the regulatory constraints and opportunities. Um, either they are going by the regulations of the EPA or uh, the organizations that they are following each according to their industry. Um, they are also uh, following some sustainable practices like um, EcoCert and um, rainforest alliances, um, ethical sources, uh, sourcing, responsible sourcing, and also um, uh, the working on the whole supply chain. So Rainforest Alliance, as an example, is um, fighting deforestation and climate change and building economies um, better with better opportunities, better working conditions for rural, rural people living in these areas. And um, it works also in solving some urgent environmental and social challenges especially that most of the forests are falling at an alarming rate. Each minute, 85 acres are destroyed worldwide. So you will find a lot of, of um, companies um, are having the Rainforest Alliance logo or um, having the Rainforest Alliance uh, procedures in their business practices or on their websites. Um, going to the ecological uh, part of sustainability, um, there is August 1st, 2018 was what is called the Earth Overshoot Day, which means that the it's the day that marks the date when we all, as human beings, have used and consumed more from nature than our planet can renew in a whole entire year. The footprint um, framework was um, combined with the UN Human Development Index, helping countries determine if they are meeting the minimum conditions for sustainable development or no. And 
they are having matrix matrices over there and um, calculators for every country so that they can see how they are performing uh, on their footprint. Um, the carbon footprint of humanity was close to zero 150 years ago. And um, if we want to live, to live up to the commitment of what um, in 2050, um, then it has to be zero again. That's why the UN and the whole governments worldwide in so many countries are working towards this because if if this is not the case then we will need one and a half more planet than planet earth to live in as if the rate is going to be this um population is also one of the main um things that the UN is trying to uh, talk about and to educate people about the population and about the food and the energy and all of these aspects together. So imagine that, if you just can imagine that on August 1st, while everyone was there, that was the day when the earth shoot down because we consumed all of the resources in one single day. Consumer behavior is one of the biggest impacts on um, sustainability. And um, just to give you an idea, an average American is using 160 gallons per day. Quarter of it is in the flush toilet and millions of people are living on water on three gallons of water per day so we really need to change how we do things otherwise it's not going to be maintained the, to the next generations that needs to live on planet earth um, one of the consumer behaviors that really um, impacts the um, the um, forests and cause deforestation was the palm oil industry. And palm oil industry really was um, a big issue when some of the like big companies was only defrosting the rain forests in Indonesia and Malaysia with very big um, numbers only to grow palm trees, which triggers the whole ecosystem at once. So rather than they, they, the complexity of the destruction that happens in Indonesia and Sumatra with taking off these rainforests just to plant palm oil so that we can use it in our household products makes a huge imbalance in the ecosystem in these countries. So we as consumers really need to have an upper hand on the companies that are doing our own products. And these companies now are working towards more um, um, sustainable supply without harming the environment or doing any disruption in the ecosystem. And um, we will be talking about Indonesia later on in this um, webinar, but I, I just wanted to give you some uh, information about the, the consumer behavior and how it really impacts the environment um, with this palm oil example in Indonesia. And then we are going to go later on to the essential oil part of the uh, presentation and um, we will talk more about the 
problems and the challenges and how um, the government and the companies also are uh, working towards solving some of these issues as um, aromatherapists. We are very keen on the sustainability of the supply of what we are um, using. So, vetiver and vetiver is um, coming from Haiti. In 2010, um, there was um, a committee to help improve the status of the population in Haiti through sustainable agriculture programs. Um, these programs aims to protect the um, biodiversity and contribute to reforestation in Haiti. The goal of this committee was to support the communities involved in the cultivation of vetiver and to provide the farmers with some tools and inputs and access to markets, which was really necessary to um, diversify their production with a range of a high value and commercially important essential oil. Um, this um, program increased the certification level to 50%. So half of the Haitian vetiver is now eco-cert and uh, responsibly certified, ensuring that the price stability is there, ensuring that the farmers are well educated and that they are having an access to the technology out there. Um, they work with local communities on focusing on women and children and developing the health strategy also for these farmers. Um, they continue supporting the schools, building and equipping the schools with computers and um, they also have a lot of um, uh, vision tests for the students uh, giving them a lot of eyeglasses and um, whatever these communities needs to and this was one of the approaches uh, for um, a community in Heidi from the bigger organizations and the bigger companies that was previously um, consuming very, very uh, uh, commercially just for the use of the essential oils without looking really to the people and the, the, the economy they are living in and how bad was it. And um, which turns again to the UN developmental goals um, to no poverty and to um, to end the poverty in Haiti and work with the communities. Um, on the other hand, uh, if we go back to Indonesia, patchouli is a key source of income in um, the Sulawesi area and to supply to secure the supply of this natural ingredient which 90 percent of the supply are coming from Indonesia. Um, the companies and, and local organizations are working together in um, com in in since 2013 in Indonesia. There is a holistic approach to sourcing focuses on the, the origin of the raw materials, building strong relationship with the small holders and the producers, supporting them in developing their businesses in a sustainable way, which was very good because, again, patchouli is a key source of income in this uh, island in Sulawesi Island and um,
the 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 families, the producers, everyone is working in in the same um, uh, household in patchouli. Um, the the training program are offered to more than one thousand producer and their families on good agriculture practicing, good distillation practices, on how to promote environmentally friendly production methods, along with educating these these communities on nutrition and how to uh, manage the incomes as a household, and also um, include some renovations of the distillation unit, which, which was really old, and to improve the energy efficiency and reduce the firewood consumption and the trees that was used for the firewood. They also educate the local producer um, on um, managing the cash flow and planning and record keeping for their small businesses, which really help them um, grow out of their previous small incomes that were just coming with the patchouli picking and 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 every year, um, they by by doing this, their the sustainability of sourcing this precious natural ingredient was really um, working, helping to grow strong roots um, with. Economic, with the support of the economy and support of the local people was um, a great um, program for making sure that the sustainability of this uh, product that we all love to use. Um, geranium was another um, oil that is coming from Egypt and um, most of the plantations of the essential oils and the herbs, uh, the aromatic plants in Egypt was done by the Nile banks. And this was um, a very um, challenging thing because most of the plantation was contaminated by pesticides and, and, um, and geranium is one of the major um, items that is coming from Egypt and it's used widely in the perfumery industry and also used widely in the aromatherapy. And um, one of the projects that was really big in Egypt is that um, the government and one of the companies over there decided to move um, to the desert to the oasis, which was really um, a dream coming true because um, the desert, there is no water sources over there, but it's a virgin land where there's no pesticides, where there's no contamination uh, of the growing plants, uh, aromatic plants there. So uh, they picked a very nice area where they have um, a very big reservoir of underground water and um, they decided to start a project over there for sustainable grow of geranium together with other um, essential oils as well and other aromatic plants but geranium was the the, the big one so uh, it's 5,000 acres of land in a virgin land uh, starting a sustainable village uh, where uh, water is coming from the reservoirs to a water treatment um, unit where everything is used, the energy is used is solar panels. So solar panels are um, working all day saving energy so that the pivots and the water uh, a treatment unit is working towards irrigation, those plants, and then um, building houses and communities to the workers that are working in this um, 
village as well. Uh, everything is sustainable. Um, they plant the, the plants uh, are growing over there with no pesticides, nothing, and then it is used for uh, dehydration for some herbs and spices, distillation for some essential oils, and then um, the spent materials is used again as um, compost for the soil or uh, for animal feed that is over there. And as you can see, this is the um, the water treatment unit, and the water is really uh, red because of the um, um, it's coming from from the reservoir, and it's there is an um, a treatment uh, process that is undergoing before uh, taking it to the pivots, and then um, the distillation unit. That was another um, example in another country of how the government and the companies are working towards sustainable supply of essential oils and of other uh, aromatic plants. Moving to um, India, where um, menta arvensis and menta peperita are grown there with 80%. So in an area which is called Uttar Pradesh, uh, there is 80% of the plantation is there. So 80% of the mint is coming from India, while 20% worldwide is coming from Canada and the USA. Um, the Growers of mint in India um, earn $1.25 per day per family, which is really, really low. They plant this in March, unharvested in June, before the monsoon um, rains, and they called it liquid gold. The farmers were using the root stock, and the yield was becoming really, really bad. Uh, the programs that was done in India was really good. Um, it was for training the communities over there on how to grow and cultivate um, the mint without reusing the rootstock. 2,645 farmers were trained on how to prepare this and how to irrigate the mint and the program at the end of the day increases the yield with 68% than before. Coming to China, which is one of the major complexities when it comes to sustainability and environmental protection. China is really a complex country. There, there are hundreds and thousands of reports on the country deteriorating environment and the problem that this is causing worldwide, um, from air pollution to cancer villages near dirty factories to the devastation um, of droughts and floods, and um, despite that. Um, China um, estimated 400 millions have been lifted out of absolute poverty and they have been now in a prosperous middle class due to the economic growth that was undergoing in China. And this, this prosperous middle class is a well-educated class and they are forcing the, the government now and the country towards recognition of what is a big problem, as China never sees that emission was a big problem, that it, it has to be dealt with immediately. Um, because the, they have millions of people still was in poverty and economic growth was still their priority number one. Um, now, the pressure that China 
is faces to solve sustainable uh, issues comes from within, from the people living in China as they are more educated now. There is a lot of health issues. There is a lot of environmental issues. And uh, also, in addition to the external pressure um, and concerns about China and the sustainable, the, the environmental problems. Um, lately, China uh, has been doing a lot of changes in the um, country. Um, the environmental protection agencies are working really, really hard uh, towards um, a program. So let's say that there was companies in China that are that were working three shifts a day, and um, they have no safety measures. Um, the gas emission was horrible. Um, they were having a lot of waste that was thrown everywhere. Uh, these companies were completely shut down. And um, before they have so many warnings and uh, people were not really caring about the warnings, but lately um, these companies were completely shut down and they are not going to be reopened again except when they are um, going with the regulations and safety towards the workers and towards the environment as well. Some other companies that worked on the sustainable um, programs and worked on uh, developing their their practices and their machinery and equipments, um, they are only working now only one shift. Um, it's a process that had already begun and um, it's developing. Uh, and advancing as more policies and awareness and engagements from the government and from the people um, is there. Um, so it was a complex problem that caused a lot of issues worldwide, but they are also working on, on it one step at a time, if we can say. So, how can we, as communities and individuals, help maintaining a, a good, sustainable environment? So, there is a lot of things to be done. Um, just to think about sustainability, that it's a necessity, it's not a choice anymore. And when I was doing this uh, research, um, I've read a lot of facts and figures and stuff, and I was really not believing the amount of numbers that I have been reading of how many wastes we are doing and how we are consuming things in a wrong way. And I was really shocked about the Earth's overshoot day, and I started thinking about everything as an individual living in this world with my my family on how we can really save our planet. Um, it may start with one person and then um, everyone else will, you know, do the same and have a little thought about how we can really be responsib responsible about sustainability. So, Save, saving electricity by plugging appliances is one way to go. Um, stop using paper statements and turning to online uh, statements um, from the banks or from any kind of financial institution we're working with. Um, speak up as in in local communities or net or authorities and try to help stop printing and go green uh, just turn off the lights if uh, uh, if you're new if we're not using them um, just do a very an a research on how to buy from companies that have sustainable practices 
uh, and they don't harm the environment, they can go. You can go to the website of any company if you're in the supermarket buying some stuff, just flip the label, see the website, and look for the logos if they are Rainforest Alliance, if they are um, EcoCert, if they are having any kind of you know sustainable practices, um, go to the website, read their sustainability um, information and buy from them, support them. Um, in addition to that, um, just use water responsibly. I, I'll just say, instead of taking a shower in, in five to ten minutes, we can just have it a little bit. I mean, it's it's great to, to be clean, but it's also great to maintain the water levels. Um, recycle, that we can always recycle things like paper, plastic, glass, aluminum, anything that we can recycle. Um, adjusting the the thermostat in in winter and in summer replacing old um appliances which with more energy efficient um appliances um you know um try to do things more manually like um i know it's hard to shovel the snow manually but using the snow blower um uh and you know using a lot of uh, of 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 gas to you know uh start these equipments maybe we can use them some sometimes manually um it's a little bit of exercise as well um shopping smart and shopping local as well i guess this will help um a little bit plan planning meals um, reducing our wastes, um, uh, trying to grow some some greens in 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 the backyard or in in small pots in our kitchen. Um, ask for uh, always be involved in the organizations in your local communities. Um, talk about um, anything that you can see um, beneficial towards sustainability and anything that anyone can think of may be of a great help. Um, also, um, Social responsibility is great. It counts. Um, encouraging your colleagues and your neighbors, and you know, uh, finding ways to achieve those goals will be will be great as well. Plant more trees, and um, read more about sustainability. Donate what you don't use. And again, use water responsibly as it really um, hurts me when I was reading about how we are consuming water and other communities in the world are really have no access to fresh water as human beings. Um, so um, that's the end of my presentation today. And um, I thank you very much for this evening and I hope you enjoyed it and uh, and that I give you a little bit of heads up about sustainability. Well, thank you so much, Ragda. We really appreciate all you sharing all that knowledge and those wonderful slides. And I would recommend to anybody as well with the one that you had with the um, what's being done over in Egypt, there's a link there to a YouTube video. I watched it myself and it's it yeah. was I was really, really blown away by what they're doing over there. So thank you so much for sharing. Thank you.